How do you turn some science looking at maintaining biodiversity? Thanks to Sam Moyle for producing this PowerPoint. So science understanding we're going to look at, maintaining biodiversity is an ethical issue with long-term biological and or environmental consequences. Recognize that humans have an obligation to prevent species extinction. Humans have an ethical obligation to prevent extinction. I hope you would accept this. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity refers to the abundance of organisms on Earth. Why is it important? There's three main ways of looking at this. From a human-centric, from a selfish, human-y perspective. We get things from living things. So we get food, we get uh, shelter, we get materials that we can use, we get medicines, clothing. And if we limit biodiversity, then our ability to find things like new medicines diminishes. Some benefits for humans have arisen from unusual or unexpected sources. So snake venom is an anticoagulant, so it's used to prevent blood clotting. Tropical frog secretions prevent UV damage to skin, so it could be a possible new sunscreen. Paclitaxel is an anti-cancer drug that's been derived from slow-growing Pacific yew trees. So if we don't have Pacific yew trees, we don't have this new drug. And vublastin has been used for a while. It's derived from a tropical rainforest flowering plant. And it interferes with spindle formation during cell division, so it's a very handy uh, anti-cancer drug too. We exploit our natural environment for our benefit. A less human-centric perspective is looking at interconnectedness. So why is biodiversity important? Because all organisms are interconnected. We share a biosphere, and if we upset the balance of aspects of the biosphere, things will go wrong. There's this hypothesis that goes back to the 1960s called the Gaia Hypothesis, saying all living things have evolved in a way that maintains the planet so that it's suitable for life to exist. Examples of this, so we build soil from organic matter. Uh, minerals are cycled, nitrogen gas is fixed. All of these things happen because of living things. Oxygen levels are high enough to maintain life on Earth, but not so high that uncontrolled burning occurs. There was a period on Earth when the oxygen level was close to 30% rather than 20%, and basically everything was on fire pretty much all the time. So a balance has been struck. Temperature at the surface of the Earth is somewhat regulated by clouds, and clouds are related to transpiration in plants. So if we get rid of too many plants, then transpiration won't occur, and that might have an impact on cloud formation, which would be bad. Rather than think of a gene pool as belonging to one species, we could think of the, all the organisms' gene pools as a source. We shouldn't be reducing biodiversity because then we're taking genes out of this huge gene pool that we might be able to use. Focusing on conservation of single species is important, but focusing on conserving entire communities is much more important because you maintain the entire system within that community. There's an ethical aspect to preserving biodiversity as well. Shouldn't all life be respected in some way? Isn't it arrogant for humans to make decisions that affect other organisms solely for our gain? Do other organisms have the same rights as humans, an equal share of the world's resources? Or should they have a greater share, since they might make up greater numbers of uh, organisms themselves? Should we keep areas of the Earth human-free to just leave them to develop by themselves, or do we need humans there to maintain their safety? If we lose organisms, we lose beauty in the world. It'd be a rare landscape that isn't improved by having some living things in it. You could say the surface of the moon has a certain type of stark beauty, but I think a coral reef is much more beautiful than a denuded landscape any day of the week. If genetic diversity is necessary for natural selection and evolution, it doesn't stand to reason that it affects all living organisms. Mm -hmm. So how do we maintain biodiversity? What can we do? So let's talk about preserving habitat. The habitat of an organism is the place that it lives. So it's the medium in which it lives. So it could be the soil, the air, water, on a tree. That's the habitat. Aspects of the habitat also include the climate and the other organisms present. Species never live by themselves in isolation. They live within a community of other organisms, and each organism has its own niche that it is exploiting, and those niches overlap and they can support other organisms in the environment. So they have features that have been selected for in their habitats, so if the habitat is altered, the selection pressures also alter. So it's a good idea to preserve habitat, because if you preserve habitat, you preserve the relationships between the organisms within that habitat. There's two accepted levels of conservation in terms of preserving species. So if we really want to conserve an area, we want to make sure that the area is large enough so that 50 of the largest carnivores in the community can be there. So that's the size of the area that you need. And going beyond that to just secure and be reasonably confident of the security of survival, the area needs to be large enough to support 500 of the largest carnivores in the community. So what that means is we need large spaces preserved. This will lead, lead to survival. This will lead to security. In, within the habitat, we have both biotic and abiotic factors needed for the community to survive. So we have those living and non-living factors that will lead to 
the preservation of the species there, as well as the feeding relationships between organisms. So the best way to preserve a species is to preserve its habitat. Because if you preserve the habitat, you preserve all the organisms within that area, you preserve the community, and that means your species is probably going to be quite happy there. Recycling resources is what happens in natural habitats as well. So in biological terms, we talk about recycling more than just elements and minerals, compounds, things like that, but also nests and burrows, and these are called resources. So resources are normally limited within a community and they need to be recycled from one generation to the next and from year to year. Minerals, elements, compounds used by plants and eaten, they're returned to the soil by death and decomposition by decomposers like fungi and bacteria. And then those important compounds, elements, minerals can be reused to grow the next generation of organisms. If you disturb a community, you affect its chemical composition and it can take a long time to recover. So there's an experiment done at Hubbard Brook in the US. So they cut away a lot of timber, but they left it on the ground. So lots of nitrates were lost from the soil and they went into a stream. So the nitrogen leaching continued for a long time. The nitrogen wasn't being used again by the plants. It was just going into the waterways and washing away. And they compared the nitrogen levels in the soil and waterways compared to a control area where they didn't cut down the timber and they didn't just leave it on the surface. They just left the community as it was. So the community was really good at recycling the nitrates, but as soon as we got rid of the big trees, the disturbed community was losing those nitrates. And that's not good. So let's look at, talk about evolution now. So since the beginning of life on Earth, which is about 3.5 billion years ago, maybe 3.7, Many millions of species have evolved, and about 99% of them have gone extinct. They're just not around today. A lot of it is due to catastrophic events like asteroid impacts. A lot of it is just due to natural selection, changes in the environment, changes in climate, and that leads to changes and evolution occurring. A good example of this is the KT extinction 65 million years ago. It wiped dinosaurs from the Earth, but some small mammals benefited from that because there was a reduced competition and predation from what the dinosaurs would have been doing. And those ancestral mammals gave rise to all the mammals that we have present today, including the humans like us. The average lifespan of a species is around about 2 million years. Um, humans, we've been around for about 200,000 years. So theoretically, we have 1.8 million years left. Human activities have sped up the extinction rate significantly. We're now in the sixth great extinction now due to human activities. In terms of what we know about life on Earth, we know a reasonable amount, but we haven't named anywhere near all the species that are currently present. There are many calculations for how many species there might be on Earth today. So let's use a figure of 10 million. Many of those are wide varieties of insects, likely if we're just looking at animals, for example. Most animals on Earth are insects. We've only classified and named less than 2 million species so far of everything living on Earth. So let's just say there's 8 million left. And those 8 million can be very, very useful to us, but they're also useful within their communities within and in their populations. They're useful for each other and they're useful for the Earth as well. Just some things to think about before we go. If the evolutionary lifespan of a species is around about 200 million years, and humans have been around for about 200,000 years, how much have we changed over that 200,000 years? How much have we changed over the last 50 years? How much have we changed over the last 30 years? How much has our technological advancement altered the course of our evolution? How is our reliance on technology going to shape us over the future? Where might our evolution take us? What will be the predominant species on Earth in 200,000 years? Is it still likely to be us, especially considering some of the things that have happened over the last 100 years, for example? What's going to happen over 2 million years, 20 million, 200 million years? So these are just some fun things to think about. I think a big question from this presentation, though, is what can you do to help preserve the biodiversity that we have left on the planet? Biodiversity is diminishing at a rapid pace. We have lots of issues that we need to deal with. What can you do to help out? I think that's a big question to ask. So let's do our check. So maintaining biodiversity is an ethical issue with long-term biological and or environmental consequences and recognise that humans have an obligation to prevent species extinction. So I'm science, we looked at biodiversity. That's it for science today. See ya. And we're finished.